Welcome to edusati.com, your partner in education. This session, we continue our discussion about etymology. To give you a brief review of what we did in the last lecture and what exactly is etymology, etymology is the study of words, their origins, and over the time, how the meanings of these words have changed. Etymology says that any word can be broken into its roots and we may interpret the meaning of the word based on the understanding of these roots. We start the discussion of this session with the first root as science. Science means knowledge. We are often heard saying that my conscience does not allow me to do something wrong. Now can we interpret the meaning of conscience based on this word? Yes, conscience may be related to your inner soul or your self-knowledge and that is what conscience means. Conscience is self-knowledge. We say so because the word root can means together And science is knowledge. So if someone is together with knowledge, that is he is aware about his own deeds, he has conscience. That is why we say it is self-knowledge. Can we differentiate between conscience, conscious and cautious? Well, as we've already discussed, conscience is self-knowledge. Conscious is when a person is not fainted. That is, he's completely in his senses. He's not giddy, he's not sleepy, he's not sleeping, but he's completely aware about whatever is happening around. It is a medical condition where a person is completely alert. Cautious means being vigilant about your own actions, being alert. Being a little skeptical is related to being cautious. Although these words are homophones, but they are entirely different in meanings. The next word that we derive from science is omniscience. We know that the word root omni means every. Any word that starts from omni, it relates to every. For example, omnipresent. Omnipresent is something that is present everywhere. For example, air, it is omnipresent. God, it is omnipresent. Thus, omniscience is the knowledge of everything. In other words, that starts with omni is omnivorous. These are the animals that eat both plants as well as flesh. If I join pre to shines, I get prescience. Pre means prior, thus prescience is prior knowledge. Nishines, if I break this word, I get ni, which means no, and science is knowledge. So if somebody does not have any knowledge, he is nishined. This means that he's ignorant. He's ignorant about the facts. Thus, nishayans means no knowledge or being ignorant. The world can be broken into white and black scales. That is, we have good things as well as bad. If a word has malice as a root, it relates to something that is bad. Whereas the word root bonus or bone st stands for being good. 
we often hear people saying each other bonjour or bon nuit. This, these are the French words for good day and good night simultaneously. Thus, bon or bonus stands for good. Now let us discuss the word root malice, which means bad. Thus, all those words which have ma which have malice as a root are discussing bad. For example, malignant, which is a state of harm. If somebody says that he was looking at me with malignant sight, that means he was looking at that person in a hostile way, in a bad way. Male diction. Now, if I break this word, I get male, which stands for malice, that is bad, and dict. Dict is written. Dict stands for to write, that is writing. So, male diction is something that is written or spoken bad. Thus, male diction is a curse. Male factor. If I break this word, I get male and factor. This male factor is any factor in some work or task that is hindering the task. Uh, for example, you can think about uh, any person who is not adding to your to the group work. You can say that he's acting to be the male factor in our group. That is, he's hindering our work or our jobs in the group. Male efficient. That is doing harm or evil malevolent now if i break this word i get male that is malice or bad and vol which is wishing now as we said the dict is related to writing vol relates to wishing so if somebody is wishing harm for you or he's wishing bad for you that person is malevolent Male droid, that is cum clumsy. Now, if I break this word, I get male and adroit. You'll be intrigued to know that the right hand in Latin is known as adroit. Now, for example, now if I talk about the right hand. In Greek, it is known as Dexter and in Latin it's known as a droid. Since all the skill or all the productivity rests in the right hand, so a droid in English means something that is very skillful or productive. And if I add male to a droid, I join these two roots, I get male adroit, that becomes clumsy. You can also use the word gauche here. Gauche is the Latin word for your left hand. So if you try and write with your left hand, the writing would be clumsy, it will not be clean. Thus, anything that is clumsy can be termed as male adroit or gauche. Lastly, the word is malice, which is ill will. So, a malevolent person creates malice, that, he, that is, he wishes bad for you. As we discussed, bad that is malice, we discuss, we'll discuss bonus, that is good. Now, bonus, that is what you get on Christmas or Diwali or any sort of festival from your officers or anybody else, that comes from bonus. Bonus is something that is good or additional. As we said, malignant was bad, Benignant or benign is kindly. So you might have read it on many cards that your benign presence, we wish your benign presence at some or the other place. 
that is your kindly your good presence benediction that is speaking good if i break this i get bene and dict so thus bene relates to good relates to good and dict relates to speaking so benediction is speaking good benefit or benefactor now if i again break this word i get bene which is good and fit that is to make now as dict was related to speaking wol was related to wishing fit or fact that is factors is related to make thus benefit is to make good now this is a benefit for me that is it will make my task easy it will make my task good been volent that is wishing good if i break this i get bene that is good and vol that is wishing bona fide now this is keeping good faith now we discuss the word root for requesting we can say the donor that is the donor is to give thus any word that has donor as a root relates to giving for example condone now if i break this word come is together and don is to give this condone basically is to give pardon or to basically excuse someone donor can be seen in the words like donate donation is what people usually give and the person who donates is known as a donor again donor is it comes from donor likewise we have placate that is to appease um uh, appeasing is basically to pacify someone by giving something now if i have to use it in a word uh the school tried to appease the students by making promises now by this we understand that the school was making promises so as it could deal with the anger of students so as the students are pacified they do not get angry so the school authorities started making promises placate also means to appease or to please from the entire discussion above we've come across three main roots that is volo that is that was to wish deco that is to say and facio that is to make so from volo we have voluntary any person who is working with his own will without any profit would be voluntary person he is a volunteer actually and the task he does is voluntary task so there we have volo as a word root deco that is to say so if i say he's contradicting my task or he's contradicting my views that is contra is contra comes from against and dict again we know that it relates to speaking so he's speaking against whatever i am saying that becomes contradicting again we used to have dictations in our junior classes so dictate comes from speaking dictation comes from speaking facio that is to make so we have factories factory comes from facio a factory is a place where things are made so facio which is to make leads to factory you will be amused to know that any word that ends in fy here fy 
signifies fact facio that is to make now if i say dictify now i have just joined dico that is dictify break this somebody speaking and it is to make so dictify that is he is dictating so he is it is dictified right likewise magnify you making it magnificent or big simplify you making it simple we all aware we are all aware of the fictional books that is the books that actually were not existent the stories which were actually not existent but they are written uh, we can discuss many stories like cinderella which was a fictional character fictional also comes from facio that is to make as deco means to say so does lacquer lacquer means to speak so thus any word that has loc or lacquer as a word root would mean to speak for example laconic laconic is an adjective for such a person who speaks less but whatever he speaks has a very significant and a deep meaning president roosevelt was said to be laconic There's a story about him that once he was sitting in a bar and there were two reporters who had a bet between themselves that upon being questioned president Roosevelt will not speak more than two words in the conversation when one of the reporters went to ask the same to president Roosevelt he just replied you lose in these two words he clearly said that he was not interested to speak to the reporter such a reply is a laconic reply next word is soliloque soliloque is a very significant part in the shakespearean writing if i break this word i get soli which comes from solo and loke which means to speak so if somebody is speaking to himself that thing is known as soliloque it is also known as monologue next is ventriloquism or ventriloquist now if i break this word i get ventri and loke and as we know that any word if it ends in ist it becomes an adjective so ist makes it an adjective so ventriloquist is an adjective for someone now loke means to speak how about ventri ventri is a word root for your stomach thus ventriloquism or ventriloquist this means that a person who is speaking from his stomach now this does not make a lot of sense ventriloquism is a dying art where a person speaks without opening his mouth thus it seems that he is using his stomach to speak this photograph will put more light on this such people who practice this art are known as ventriloquists can you guess the word which means that a person who's enacting like someone else now we may confuse it to be mockery but mockery is usually done to disparage someone however i'm talking about a person whose profession is to act or enact like someone will such people are known as impressionists the next word that comes from loke is colloquial colloquial means a language that is spoken by everybody together now if i break this word i get 
whole as one root, which means together. And look as the other root, which means to speak. This colloquial language is a language spoken by everybody together. You may say that colloquial language is yet another name for dialect of any language. Another word that we come, can understand with the use of loc is circumlocation. Now if I break this word, I get circum and loc. Now circum obviously relates to circle as we can understand from the word itself. So if somebody is speaking around and round, that is he's beating about the bush, that sort of speaking is circumlocatory speaking. A person who speaks a lot or talks a lot is known as loquacious. He may also be known as verbose or garrulous. These three words mean speaking, writing, or saying meaningless excess words. You may say that prating is also another word for loquacious people. Do you know what do we call such people who speak very loudly? Such people are known as vociferous. The word comes from VOC or woke, which again means to speak, or that is spoken actually. Another word that you can derive from VOC is vocal. The word root magnus means large. We all are aware of words such as magnify or magnolocant or magnanimous. Now if I break this word magnanimous, I get two roots as magna and animus. The word root animus means mind or soul. Thus magnanimous is any person who is very kind-hearted or big-hearted, who is very generous. We may also call such people as affluent. Now, if I break this word, I get AF, which means to, and the other root is flu, which is to flow. So, affluent is that flows. Generally, it is used with money. So, if people are very rich and they have the ability to spend a lot, we call them affluent people. The antonym of magnanimous would be pusillanimous. Pusillanimous has a root pusil, which means tiny. So pusillanimous would relate to people who are quite coward when it comes to spend. Pusillanimous may also be used for coward or timid people. The other antonyms of magnanimous may be parsimonious, which means a person who thinks twice or thrice before spending. Or it may be penury, indignance or destitute. The next word that comes from magnus is magnate, which means to attract. Magnify. Now, I told you that if a word ends in FY, it becomes to make. So, magnify means to make big, to make large. Magnitude. It is the noun of magnum. Now, whenever we are checking the magnitude, we are checking how big is that thing. So, if I say what is the magnitude of the wave or something, I'll basically check what is this. The largeness or the how big is this wave. Magnus opus. 
Opus means work. Basically, opus is a root for legs. So magnum opus is a very, very big work. It's the masterpiece of something. That becomes the major pillar or the major leg of some artist. Now, if I say uh, Gaj Gamini is the magnum opus of M.F. Hussein, this means that one of it, it, it forms the basis it forms the pillar or it forms the main leg of all the art that he has painted. Opus means leg. Now if I write octo, that means eight with opus, it becomes octopus. And it is, a, as we all know, octopus is an animal that has eight legs. That is why we call it octopus. Octo is eight, opus are legs. Magni locans. Now, if I break this word, I have magni as one root, which means large, and locant, as we've just done, is to speak. So, if somebody is basically speaking quite largely, that is, that is, he's being egotistic. He is showing off, or he's bragging about some things that he has, or he's bombastic. He's bossing around. That sort of speaking would be known as magni locan speaking. Now let us discuss the word roots that relate to the family members. Any word that has frater as a root relates to your brother. We might have heard people using the word that he belongs to the film fraternity or medicine fraternity now fraternity means brotherhood the word that starts with sorrow relates to your sister as we have fraternity similarly we have sorority yuxor or oxar is and wife this means any word that has aksar as root relates to your wife. Likewise, we have maritus that relates to your husband. Now that we know the roots of our relationships, that is brother, sister, wife and husband, let's discuss some words that relate to these roots. Let's start with brother. So if I say it's fraternized, that means you have a social relationship. Now two people who are quite close socially but are not in a blood relation, they have a fraternized relationship. Think about your best friend. He and you go everywhere together. This sort of a relationship is fraternized relationship. This person shows me some fraternal love, that is, he shows some brotherly love. And as we've just done, fraternity is brotherhood or guild. As frater, we have soro, which is sister. The sorority is a woman's organization. Of this, for example, we have some NGO that is working for women and it is run by women it it is sorority the gulabi gang is an example of sorority now if your sister gifts you something such gifts are known as sororal gifts These are the gifts or the things that your sister gets you. And if you treat someone as your sister, you say, I sororize with her. That is, you treat her as your sister, whereas sororal means the things that your sister has given to you. As we've just said, yuxo relates to your wife. So any word that has yuxo is 
related to vibes. For example, Euxorius. Now you might be aware of some people who act as their wife wants them to act. Such people are Euxorius. They are we may not say they're threatened by their wives, but uh, yes, they are under the control of their wife. We may either call them Euxorius or we may call them henpecked. Now, there's a difference between Euxorius and henpecked that a person whose wife dominates over him or threatens him is henpecked. Whereas Euxorius is just, he's controlled by his wife. It might be used by the use of manipulation or love or sensuality or anything. Such a woman who henpecks her husband, that is a loud, aggressive and abusive woman, you may use terms like virago, haridan or taramagant for her. You may also call her shrew. And if it's a man who's very loud, aggressive, and abusive, you may call him Scrooge. Now, if you've read the play Christmas Carols, the protagonist is named as Scrooge. You can think about the character sketch of that protagonist. If not, you might have seen the cartoon called DuckTales. Again, the protagonist was named Scrooge. You can again think about the character sketch. Euxorial, that is, you are pertaining to wife. Basically, we call such people Euxorial who are attracted to someone's wife. Euxocide. Now, it's very beneficial for us to know that any word that ends in side means killing because side is the word root for killing. If I join Euxor to it, this means that if somebody kills his wife, that concept or that thing is known as Euxocide. For example, we have suicide, that is self-killing. Again, it ends in side. This means that you're killing yourself. Likewise, we can combine side with patri, fratri. As we said, patri means father. So if you're killing your father, it becomes patricide. Fratri comes from brother. We've just done this. So fratricide would mean killing your, your brother. Avankli. Avankli is basically killing your uncle. Now this would you'll be intrigued to know that evancle basically means your maternal uncle. Right? Evancle. That means your maternal uncle. It also gives us another word that is evancular. Evancular is the behavior where a person is friendly towards less experience. Now, for example, you've just joined a job and your boss is really caring for you. He's helping you a lot. He's being avuncular. He's acting as an uncle to you, so he's avuncular. Likewise, if we join side to matri, it becomes the killing of mother. Sorori, we just said a sister, so sorori side would mean killing your sister. Filicide or prolicide is killing your offspring or child. Proli means offspring. And Philly is your child. It might be a guy or a girl, but it means a child. Homicide is killing someone, any human. Germicide killing the germs. Mariticide is killing the husband. Regicide, killing the king. Now, regi means the king. The game of chess is based on the concept of regicide. There, if the king dies, 
the opponent wins the game. The other words that we get from regi are regime, that is the kingdom, or even regiment. Pesticide, that is killing the pests. Geronocide, geronticide, sorry. Geronti comes from gyre, which is old people. We've just done that. Gyre means old. Gyre is old. So, geronticide would mean killing the old people. Infanticide, killing the infants, that is children below the age of five years. And genocide, now if I break genocide, I get gen, which is the family. So, if you're killing families together, that becomes genocide. This means mass killing, that becomes genocide. Marital relates to your husband or marriage. So any word that relates to marital talks about husbands and marriages. Marriage itself comes from marital. Marital related to husband and wife. Extramarital, out of the marriage. So people have extramarital affairs. They're having affairs outside the marriage. Extra comes means out. Premarital, before the marriage. You must go in for premarital checkups. Pre means before. And as we already know, gammy is marriage. So monogamy is one marriage. Polygamy is multiple marriages. And meso, which is hatred, so misogamy would be hatred for marriage. Now we discuss two roots which are equi and par. Equi means same, equi also means trust. Likewise, par means equality. Now I say equi means trust because if I write equity, this is a sort of a share that usually companies uh, propagate. So equity shares are the shares that people buy based on the trust of some or the other organization. And if I say two things are equal, that means as much as you can trust A, so much you can trust B. So these two are equal. So in general we say equi means same. Likewise par means equality. So if anywhere you encounter par that means equality. For example you might have seen people or heard people saying that school A is at par with school B in the terms of say results. Now we can apprehend that this means as good are the results of school A, so good are the results of school B. This means they are at par. They are almost or we should say they are equal. The word par comes from the golf grounds where every hole in the girl's ground is related to some power known as par. So from there we derive the word par and we have used it in multiple words in the language. Now let's discuss some words that have roots as equi and par. For example, we have equivocal. If I break this word, I have equi, which means same, and woke, which means spoken. Now, if I join these two words, this means that has similar sort of meanings. Now, if I give a reply which is quite diplomatic, which does not basically 
you cannot interpret anything out of the reply that is an equivocal reply. You may say it to be an ambiguous statement. For example, uh, while in hustle, somebody says you go get that from there. Now this that might have multiple meanings and there might have multiple meanings. So this that and there are ambiguous, right? So such a statement is ambiguous. But still, there's a small difference between equivocal and ambiguous, which is that ambiguous statements are said per chance, like you're quite occupied with something, you're working, and per chance you say something that does not make sense, that is ambiguous. And equivocal statements are said deliberately to deceive someone or to save yourself or anyway, but these are deliberate statements. Another word is equinox. Now if I break it, equi means same and nox means night. It happens on 21st March and 21st September. This is the concept in science specifically where the day and the night are of equal length. This thing is known as Equinox. Now we have many words that come from nox, such as nocturnal. Nocturnal animals are the animals that come out at night. For example, cockroaches, owls, bats. These are nocturnal. Again, we have obnoxious. Obnoxious behavior. If I break this, I get OB, NOX, and IOUS. OB or OB means against. Any word that has OB as a prefix, it's, it is against. Nox is night. So obnoxious is extremely unpleasant. It is against, spoken against, and it's like night. That is, it is unpleasant. It is dark. So behavior that is against and unpleasant, extremely unpleasant, that becomes obnoxious behavior. Equanimity which means equal mind. We've just discussed that animus stands from mind or soul. So equanimity is equal mind. That is, the person is in complete composure. Equilibrist or equilibrium. Those of us who remember a science, uh, we say the state of equilibrium is when the rate of forward reaction comes equal to the rate of backward reaction that is the reaction is at equilibrium so equilibrium basically means that is equal as much as it is going forward so much is it coming backwards and equilibrist is a person who walks on tight ropes you might have seen this thing in some or the other carnivals where there's a structure like this and there's this person who will walk on this rope. So if it's a rope and these are two stands and there's this, this ground uh, and there's this person who will balance himself and walk on such a rope, he's known as equilibrist. From par we have parity which means equality. And disparity is inequality. Disparage or disparage is to discourage someone and likewise we have compared now if I break this I have come that is together and par is equality so if you're comparing two things let's say A is being compared to B this means that we're checking how much is A equal to B so we are comparing these two things now we must not confuse equi with equi Equi or equine means a horse. So equi is a root for horse. It is not equal, it is horse. So equestrian is any guy or a girl, generally used for girls, who rides a horse. Let's discuss the words that end in mania. Mania is an obsession. So any sort of obsession 
ends in mania. For example, monomania. Now, if a person has defied someone, I said defied someone, he is acting monomania. Now, defy can be broken into phi, that is to make, and D is DT, that is a god. So, if somebody is treating someone as god, that thing becomes defying. So, if a person has this defied someone or something that is he's becoming monomaniac dyspomaniac is the obsession of drinking alcohol the people who usually drink all the time are dyspomaniacs kleptomaniac is the order of or the obsession of stealing things Pyromania is the obsession of fire. Now, pyro, anywhere you encounter pyre that relates to fire. And the act of burning someone's property, say to be a car or a house or anything, is known as incendiarism. Likewise, we have Mengelomaniac. We've just said that Mengelo comes from Magnus, which means big or large. Thus, the obsession for large things is Megalomania. Nymphomania. A nymph is a wife, or basically it is a woman. So Nymphomania is the intensive desire by women for sex. And such a mania in the context of men is known as satyromania. You can also say that nymphomania is another term for andromania, where andro comes from andri, which is a guy, and satyromania is gynomania, which comes from woman, that is gyne. Bibliomania is the obsession of books. It comes from Biblio, that is books or Bible. Egomania is self-worship. We've already discussed it in the session one. Xenomania, that is the obsession of foreign things. Xeno means foreign. Now, if I remove mania here and write phobia, so it becomes the fear of other things. Xenophobic are the people who have hostile attitude towards the other nationalities. As like we discussed mania, we have phobia, which means the fear. So any word that ends in phobia is related to fear. For example, claustrophobia. Claustro is locked. So the fear of locked places is claustrophobia. Likewise, we have agoraphobia, which is the fear of open spaces. Agora is basically the place for assemblies. It's a large place for assemblies. So if it's agora, it's a place to assemble. Likewise, we have acrophobia, which is the phobia of height. Acro or acron is the summit, that is the highest point. So acrophobia is the fear of heights. Hydrophobia, as we all know, is the fear from water. The disease is known as rabies. Chromophobia. Chromo relates to colors. So chromophobia is the fear of colors. Gynophobia. Gyno comes from gyne. So gynophobia is the fear of women. Androphobia. Again, andro comes from andri, which is a man. So androphobia is the fear of men. Gyroscopophobia, which is the fear of old people or old age or getting old. Gero 
is old. Acoustic or phonophobia. Acoustics are the sounds, the intricacies in sound. And phono relates to phony, which is sound again. So both of these phobias relate to this phobia of sounds. Anthophobia is the phobia from flowers. And kerophobia is the phobia of happening. We've already said that theo or theos relates to God. So any word that has a root as theo or theos relates to God. Thus, if I write IST in the end, I get a person who believes in God. And if I write A in front of this very word, it becomes a person who does not believe in God. Why? Because A means no. So theist is a person who believes in God and atheist is a person who does not believe in God. Theist, atheist. Uh, we can discuss agnostic. Agnostic are the people who say that God does not exist. Now atheist and agnostic are two different words because atheist believes that there might be a God but he is not believing in him. He does not feel that such a person or such a thing as God would help him. But agonist says that no, there is no God at all. Likewise, we have monotheism that is when I write mono that becomes single. So monotheism relates to single God. The people who believe in one God are monotheists. Polytheism, that is people who believe in multiple gods, that is multiple forms of God, they are polytheists. Like Greek mythology or Hindu mythology relates to polytheism. Pantheism, that is believing that God is a combination of forces. Now there are many people who say that this world is a creation of water, air, love, the ground, that is the earth, and such forces. So when these forces come together, the combination of such forces is known as panicism. The study of gods is known as theology. Why do we say so? Because it ends in ology. Ology is the study. Theocracy is the rule of God. We say so because crazy means rule or the government. Theomania, that is the obsession of God. People who are so much scared of God that they'll not do anything before praying are theomaniacs. The roots that relate to life are vita or viva, that is wev or white. So any word that has Vita or Vev relate to life. For example, vitamins. These are the essentials for life. Why do we say so? Because it has Vita as a root. So vitamin comes from Vita and these are the essential elements that give you life or that help in enhancing your life expectancy. Anything that is really important Important for your life is vital. For example, we say nutritious diet or a balanced diet or exercises are vital. Why? Because they are important for your life. And if you get something to life, that is, you enliven in something, that is, you're vitalizing that thing. Again, it has wet as a root. Revitalize. Now, somebody who's just uh, passed through some trauma or he's just been very sick. Now that person is revitalized by some medicines or care. Revitalized, if I break this, I get re, that is again, and vital is life. So you're giving back the life that becomes your revitalizing. And devitalize is you taking the life away. Why? Because D means away. As we just discussed, 
vitamin that is the essential part of the life that is the these are the minerals like uh, these are the elements that form the life again we have convivial that is that lives together why because can means together and with is life so two things are convivial they are living together like weeds are convivial with the crop they grow together with the crop vivacious that is full of joy we might encounter people using this term like it, it was a very vicious performance by michael jackson that is it filled you with life it filled you with energy so it was full of joy vivid that is that it gets freshness to your life next we have born with wind and we already discussed that born comes from bonus which is good so born with wind is a wish that you must have or you may have or you should have a good life that is luxurious life any word that has the prefix you it again means good for example we have eulogy that is speech in praise now we can say that it is a mis nomenclature why because it ends in logy which is the study now it is not exactly the study of good things it means that you saying something which is you're wishing someone very good that is you're being benevolent for someone thus it becomes you logic you phony now if i break this i have you that is good and phony is sound so you phony is good sound euphoria euphoria if i break this i get you and for for means to bear euphoria is well being that is you being in very very good state this become euphoria eugenics if i break this word i get you as good and gen comes from birth or family so if somebody's family is good we say he has be he is a eugenic person his entire family is good that is the reason we say he is good now that is this is eugenics euphemism that is use of good words euthanasia it is good death or mercy killing as we say if a person is suffering from a very a, a life taking disease or he's been through so many pains we give him a merciful death we take the assistance of a doctor or a medical person and give him a death prior to the destined death this is euthanasia we we can say this because you is good and thanasia means death thus euthanasia is good death we have many other words like apothanasia which is postponement of death so if somebody is near his death and he takes some medical assistance so as he can postpone his death that is apothanasia or people usually pray for sick pe- sick people that their death is apothanasia likewise if somebody drinks some sort of nectar and he cannot die we say he has the wish or the blessing of euthanasia that is he never die if i break this i get a uh, that is no so euthanasia is no death if somebody dies in very bad condition that death is cacothanasia now we already know that caco means worse so if it's a bad death it becomes cacothanasia
any word that ends in ein this means we're talking about similarity of that thing to something else if i join uh, say a word and then write ein so we say it's similar to this thing for example i say bovine now bov means a cow so bovine is like a cow the cows are quite placid they're quite calm so we say this girl is bovine in nature that is she stays calm none of the reason like bo also leads to beef no bov is the word root for beef and beef is the meat of cow canine no canine are the dogs it, it is like a dog we have canine teeth which look like the teeth of dogs so we say it's canine feline that is it leads to cat so if something looks like cats if, if somebody is as sharp as a cat he is feline in nature porcine is like a pig vulpine is like a fox now you might be thinking that these all words come from our zodiac signs as well most of these roots are used in zodiac signs for example our sign that is like a beer ours is a beer now you might have read about ours major and ours minor these are the constellations in the skies for example ours minor is a collection of seven stars it looks something like this it looks like a ladle or a spoon so it's earth minor and an extension to this becomes earth major next we have lupine which is like a wolf we just said equa is horse so equine would be like a horse so he's as fit as equine or uh, as fit as a horse or he's equine that means he's very well in very very good health leonine that is it is like a lion because leo means a lion any word that ends in eight becomes a verb so eight is a verb suffix so enervate means exhausted i break this eight makes it an makes it the verb and enever means taking the energy away so enervate that is taking the energy away castigate that he, that is you putting that person to cast that is you severely criticizing that person self abnegate if i break this word self is self ab is to negate or saying no negation or negate so self abnegate means self denial recapitulate is revising in the head you are getting a recap of something that is recapitulate we can discuss capt capit or captus here which means a head so that is uh, that is why we say recapitulate that you are revising it in your head and beheading someone means decapitate that is you are beheading that person you are executing his head simulate that is you are checking the similarity you are making it similar that is simulate intimate you're making it to the innermost like uh, intimacy is where your inner souls come together so that is intimate alleviate that is you're making the burden less if i break this i get l or l that is 2 and level that is raise so alleviate that is you're taking the you're raising the burden of something so this becomes alleviate another word that comes from level is 
levitate that is lessen the weight to the extent of flying generally it is related to the magical power so if something is magically moved away and it is lifted in the air so that is levitated vacillate that is indecisive commiserate if i break this i get com which is together miser or miser is expressing grief or lamenting so commiserate is lamenting together that is you're sharing the misery with someone you're sharing the grief with someone that become commiserate this gets us to the end of the session i hope you've enjoyed the session thank you so much and have a nice day